Well, hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello, Super Great Kids, and how are you? I'm very pleased because we have a new theme for our stories this week. Water. Rivers, seas, lakes and strange creatures who live in their watery depths. So we begin with a how and why story about how the sea became. It's from Colombia. No other country has more Spanish speakers apart from Mexico. But there are lots of other languages spoken in Colombia too. In fact, there are more than 75 indigenous languages. Our sea story is told by storyteller Juliana Marine, who is travelling the world, visiting countries and collecting stories. I wonder which countries you might have been lucky enough to visit or have learned about in school. See how many countries you can think of while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Hello, Super Great Kim. Hello, Super Great David. Kim, I have a question. I love questions. Fire away. What is the best kind of story? Well, I think the best kind of story is an old story which has been told for many years and passed on from person to person. Ooh, that's a good answer. I thought you were going to say something specific like only Baba Yaga stories or Nancy stories or stories that have to have two-headed giants in them. (laughs) No, just a story which has been loved and passed along and told by lots of people. Right. OK, so if we really want more people to hear stories, seems like we're going to need help from our lovely listeners. Yes, we know these stories because people have been sharing them with each other for donkey's years. I tell you, you tell someone else, they tell someone else, and soon everyone knows the story. Hmm. You know what, Kim? I think maybe it's such a good idea that we could possibly put it into song. If you tell a friend and I tell a friend, we'll all have a super great time. And if they share one and they pass that along, a whole lot of us, a whole lot of us, a whole lot of us will have a super great time. Well, hello there, grown-ups and Super Great Kids Stories fans. As you probably know, we depend on your generosity and support to keep making this podcast. If you subscribe and join the Owlets Club, you'll get access to all sorts of lovely extras like subscriber-only episodes, early and ad-free episodes, as well as a newsletter from Story Owl, word puzzles, book recommendations, ooh, and film footage of our live shows. To support Super Great Kids Stories and join the Owlets Club, just click subscribe in Apple Podcasts or visit patreon.com forward slash Super Great Kids Stories. Hello, Super Great Kids. I'm back. How many countries did you think of? Did you know there are close to 200 countries in the world, so you've got plenty to choose from? See how many your grown-ups know. Now, it's time for our first water story. It's told by storyteller from Colombia, Juliana Marine. Do you remember how to say once upon a time in Spanish? That's right! Había una vez. Here's Juliana. I travel the world and tell stories. And whenever I find a story that I really like, I look at it, I listen to it, I sniff it, and then I wrap it up very carefully and bloop, save it in my colorful woven bag that I carry around everywhere. And then, when I continue on my journey, I try to look for the right place where the story 
wants to live, and I bring it out and tell it. But there is one very special story that has been traveling with me even since before I left home, and it's a story that comes from where I come from, the country of Colombia. Colombia is at the very northern part of South America, right there bordering with Panama and with the Caribbean Atlantic Ocean on one side and the Great Pacific Ocean on the other side. But I told you that this story is special. Are you ready to hear it? In the very beginning, when the world was still new, the most beautiful woman who ever walked the face of the earth walked the face of the earth. Her name was Marina, and she was so beautiful because she was special. You see, Marina was no ordinary woman. Her body was made entirely out of water. Ah, everybody loved Marina. Who wouldn't? She was so full of life and love. But the one who loved Marina the most was Marino. Marino was a strong, handsome young man whose body was made entirely out of salt. Oh, Marina liked him too. And after a while, they decided that they wanted to be together forever. But there was a problem often are in love stories, aren't there? And this problem was the sun. The sun wanted Marina for himself, and he couldn't understand why she had chosen Marino. What did she see in him? He was just salt. But he, he was the sun. He was so powerful. He was so hot. Well, he decided that he knew best. He would take Marina to his realm in the sky, whether she liked it or not, but she would surely thank him for it later. But Marina found out. Water is, after all, everywhere. And when Marina heard of the sun's plans, she and Marino held hands and they ran all night to hide from the sun. Marina knew the entrance to the deepest, darkest caves where the sun would never be able to find them. But she didn't quite factor into her calculations that salt cannot run as fast as water can. And she could not, of course, leave her loved one behind. And by the time the sun rose, they had not made it to the caves in time. They weren't even halfway there. They were trapped in the worst possible place, a vast, expansive plain that stretched from horizon to horizon without even a shadow to hide under. And the sun saw them immediately. He started reaching for Marina, but Marino held on to her so, so, so tightly that their bodies became one. One vast body of water mixed with salt that spread from horizon to horizon, filling the entire plain. And that is why we have the sea. Marina and Marino were together, and from their love, the fish and the starfish and the colorful corals, everything grew from within them, creating the vast, glorious oceans. They were together, and nobody would be able to rip them apart. Or at least, that's what they thought. But the sun was not going to give up so easily. And the sun began to heat and heat and pull on Marina. And Marina started feeling her body becoming lighter and lighter and rising up into the sky. She tried to hold on to Marino. Marino tried to hold on to her. But the sun was too powerful. 
and Marina was ripped away from the one she loved, from her home, from everything she knew. But just as she was about to be devoured by the sun's blazing heat, the enemy of the sun saw what was happening. Now, who is the enemy of the sun? A lot of people think it's the moon. But if you think about it, when has the moon ever done anything against the sun? She is actually following him around all the time. In fact, she has a crush on him, but don't tell anybody. No, 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 the moon has never harmed the sun. The moon is never trying to hurt the sun. No, who is the one that covers up the sun's face? In fact, in some countries, not in Colombia, of course, but in some countries we've heard that the sun gets covered up for so long that the entire world gets cold. And people can even forget that there is such a thing as the sun at all. Ah, the clouds? That's a very smart answer. But the clouds are just lazily floating along, minding their own business. Who is the one who blows the clouds in front of the sun's face? Aha! The wind. Ah, yes. The wind has been the sun's enemy since time immemorial. The wind and the sun have always hated each other. And I discovered when I left Colombia and went farther north, to my shock horror, that the sun can be shining brightly, but you step outside and the wind makes you cold. Oh. So when the wind saw that the sun was about to obtain what he wanted most, hmm, out of pure spite, he was not going to let the sun have it. And so the wind began to blow. With all the force of a hurricane and of a gale. And Marina was blown back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until finally the wind blew her right through the sun's fingers and she fell. Until she was dashed to pieces against the rocks of the highest mountains. And yet, she did not die, because Marina was so full of love and life that anywhere a broken piece of her body fell, it was a drop of fresh rain and she left behind new life that sprang up. And it is because of this that we now have flowers and fruit trees and the Amazon jungle. And even though Marina had been scattered to the ends of the earth, every single little piece of her body still remembered the way back home. And every single little drop started searching for the downhills, the crevices and the rocks, boring holes in the rocks when necessary, down, down, down. And any time one little broken piece of her body met up with another little broken piece on the same path, they joined together, becoming bigger, faster, stronger turning into streams and then rivers, laughing and dancing and splashing and singing all the way back down to the sea where Marino waited for her with open arms. Ah, they were together again and they were safe. Until the next day when the sun rose again. And once again the sun heated, and once again the wind blew, and once again Marina was dashed against the rocks, and so it continues to this day. And yet, 
no matter how many times Marina is broken into pieces, she always, always puts herself back together and she always, always finds her way back home. That's why, to this day, by the side of the sea, the sun always burns so bright and hot. That's also why, to this day, high up in the mountains, the wind always blows so strong and cold. And that's also why, to this day, when we, the children of Marino and Marina, whenever we cry, whether it's out of sadness or joy, the tears that come from deep inside of us are a mixture so that we will always remember that we are made of water, salt, and so much love. Oh, thank you, Juliana, for sharing that story. I hadn't thought that our tears are salty because maybe, just maybe, long ago we came from the sea. Hmm. That story came from Juliana's teacher who set up the storytelling school which she attended in Medellin in Colombia. His name is Jota Viasa, and he's told stories all of his life. Now, do you know what time it is? <laughs> yes, it's time to have a dip into my bag of happies and say a big thank you to some owlets who've been fluttering into our nest and joining our owlet club. Hello to super great fan and owlet Diego, who is five years old and from Manila in the Philippines. And to his grandma Lola and mum Christina. Diego loves stories and also bookshops. Ah, Diego, that makes two of us. One of Diego's favourite stories is our August super great scary story, The Girl from Galicia. Well done for listening to that one, Diego. That makes you super brave. And hello to Logan, who has just turned six. Logan loves listening to stories at bedtime. He also likes doing our word searches. He particularly enjoyed a Nancy and the Magic Yam story. And hello to siblings Ramona, who is six, and Maya, who is four, from Kansas in the US. Ramona's favourite story is the Magic Orange Tree, and Maya's is the Greek story, The Monster in the Maze. And a big hoo-hoo-hoo to new subscribers Talus, who is eight, and Takani, who is four, from El Sobrante in California. At the moment, their favourite story is The Enormous Turnip. And hello to new owlets Joni, who is six, and Ivan, who is four, sister and brother from Manchester in the UK. Joni's favourite story is The Fish and the Star, which is written by storyteller Pamela Marr. And hello to Owlets Kent and Audrey, who are seven-year-old twins from Lyndhurst in Ohio in the US. They love listening to the stories while travelling in the car and at night before bed. Audrey's favourite story is The Magic Orange Tree, and Kent's favourite is the anxious leaf. And thanks so much to everyone who's given us a tip on Kofi. Much appreciated. Thank you. Now, you've all been drawing lots of wonderful story pictures. Here's my pick of the week. Ivy, who is seven and lives in Texas in the US, has sent us a beautiful picture of the Iranian Rapunzel story Gulbaha. I love the tall tower with all the bricks and Gulbahar at the window letting down her long hair so the witch can climb up it. A really lovely drawing. Thank you, Ivy. And Cody, who is seven, has drawn a brilliant picture of a Nancy and the magic yams. I love the three houses belonging to the dog, the duck and the goat. 
and the way you've drawn the goat who is about to put a stop to the ridiculous yams and all their chasing. And thank you to Eng Si, who is seven and lives in the Maldives. Eng Si has also drawn a fabulous picture of a Nancy and the Magic Yams story with Brother Tiger shouting for help and the yams singing their silly song, which Eng Si has carefully written out. And Rose, who is seven and lives in Sydney, Australia, with her sister Eden, has sent a beautiful picture of the tale How the Anansi Stories Got Their Name. I just love your monkey swinging from the branches with all the musical notes around him and the black snakes stretched out along the bamboo tree. And hello to Eleni, who is almost seven and lives in Lena Valley, Hobart, in Tasmania. Thanks for sending us your brilliant drawing of Mama Draga, the Sicilian ogress who lived down the well. Proper scary, Eleni. And thanks to Audrey, who is seven, and her little brother Bennett, who is three, who drew a picture together while listening to the story The Old Woman and Her Pig. I really like the old woman you've drawn with her round glasses and walking stick, looking very frustrated with her pig, which just simply would not jump over the stile. Thank you very much. And thanks to eight-year-old Adam from Alabama, one of many of you this week who voted for us on the British Podcast Awards. Go to our Facebook page or our website, supergreatkidsstories.com, if you'd like to vote for us. It costs nothing and will make us very happy. Thank you. You can vote until September the 5th. That's it for this week. If you'd like to see some of these super great drawings, they're on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. Do send in your pictures for us to share on Facebook with other story lovers. And maybe you could draw a picture of the sea and the sun and the wind and the clouds. If you'd like to send a picture, either send it via Facebook Messenger or scroll to the bottom of our website, supergreatkidsstories.com. And if you live south of London and would like to hear me telling a few stories, it's just over a week to go before I'm going to be telling some at our local village show in West End, Isha, in Surrey, on August Bank Holiday Saturday. That's the 26th of August. It starts at one o'clock and it's just me telling the stories. There are no tickets and it's free of charge. So if you live nearby, just come along and say hello. I'd love to meet you. Meanwhile, keep telling your stories and singing your songs. See if you can find an easy story to tell and surprise someone in your family by sharing your version. See you soon. This story was recorded at Wardour Studios in London.